Hey guys, Jay Beetle here, and today I'll be teaching you how to make a counter of sorts. Uh, in this particular instance, we'll be counting how many red players are currently alive at the moment. And every time it changes, the scoreboard will also change. So, first I want to explain this room. It's just a testing room to show that when you are a blue player, you can test it in TF2 and see that this number changes whenever a red player dies or respawns otherwise it won't change. So to begin with we want to just go through the entities that you'll need and then we'll fill them out. So you will want to make a filter, a team filter, filter activator TF team for each team so it knows not to count blue in this in this counter otherwise it wouldn't work because we don't have that many numbers set up but if you wanted to count both teams just a total of how many people are alive you would have to edit it a bit but it wouldn't be that bad um, next you want to take this is a really simple part make two logic cases and name name one logic zero one and the next one logic zero two and just fill out the cases one through sixteen with zero through fifteen and the other one just sixteen the reason i do this is because you're not going to have more than sixteen players on one side because as far as i know you can't have more than 32 players in a in a server I might be wrong there might be a way to bump up that but most servers won't have it so it won't matter but if you're one of the few exceptions then it's you can still add more than 32 numbers or 16 numbers sorry so after you have that you want to make a math counter and this is what keeps track of what when to update the visual representation of the counter. So you make a math counter and I just named it red counter in this case because it's not counting anything but how many people are red. There's probably a better way to name it but I didn't. And that's it for now. We will we'll add the outputs and inputs later. Next you'll want, and this is very important, you want to add a trigger as you can see. You want to add a trigger multiple over anywhere that red could possibly touch so just to be safe put it over the entire map as a matter of fact if your map's complicated and not rectangular like it probably won't be if it's worth anything uh, I think you can just as long as the origin is inside the well not touching the void inside the actual map I don't think it'll present a leak a leak I'm not sure if it'll give you other problems but I know it'll compile correctly at least so um, that's the lazy way to do it. If it were me, I would just conform it to the map so that everywhere inside the map has this trigger. So with this trigger, you want to name it red counter trigger. So this is what is talking to the count, the math counter that we named red counter. So just name it red counter trigger and make sure it has a filter for only red team so it doesn't count everyone that spawns, just red team for now at least. Okay, so next we will start filling out the outputs of and, and connecting all the entities together so it'll work. Uh, and then we'll get to the numbers, the actual visual representation of the numbers when at the end, because, well, not at the end, but not right now either. So for the trigger multiple, you want to go to the output and very simple, just on on make two outputs on start touch and on in touch and anytime a red player touches this trigger meaning anytime it spawns really that's the only way then you would add one to the math counter which is red counter and the opposite is true anytime it stops touching this trigger you want to subtract one so you fill it out like that. So this is essentially saying anytime someone, anytime a red player spawns, you add one to the math counter, and anytime the player dies, you take one away. So it keeps track. And if there were a way to spit out that just as it is on the user interface, that would be great. I'm not sure if there is. Maybe there is. I'm not aware. But still, if you're if you're making some kind of unconventional sports map, you kind of want to have this up at the top like a scoreboard. Uh, it, I mean like I said it doesn't even have to use um, starting and playing I mean starting and dying respawning and whatnot. It could be anything. It could be a button that changes this. It could be uh, every time you cap uh, the intelligence 
really anything that you can output a well you can do an output to the mouth counter for so after you have that set up you want to go to the math counter and set it up so it knows what to give the logic cases so this is also really simple uh, you go to the outputs of the math counter and just say on out value and target the first logic entity and then in value this is pretty much saying have the logic case look at what number is stored in the math counter and use that number to do something in the logic case which will end up being changing these so you just do this simple as that so it knows which one to look at but it's, it's looking at both of them sorry uh, it'll know but most of the time I only look at logic one because there's only well I'll go to it next so for this next part before we get to the logic case you'll want to make the actual numbers you don't have to make these for now if you don't want to I just kinda wanted it to look digital if you've ever played uh, the skating rink capture the flag the skating rink you go around each time and you have to go around 30 times and each time it goes down one every time the intel passes through will be a trigger kinda like how they spawn and that that's the same essential thing but if you'll notice it's just a picture of the number it's not an actual brush but that's what I did anyway you're gonna to want to Nate you're gonna to want to make a brush a separate brush for every single digit not every single number they're gonna be every digit so if you can tell or I don't know if you noticed or not but these numbers are actually all stacked stacked on top of each other so if you drag them all if I drag them all out you can see that they're every digit um, 0 through 9 on the right side 8 this one's 0 this one's 7 2 and you want to make a brush for each of those so just make 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and spread them out like this so you don't have to be on top of them and it, it'll get very confusing if you are on top of them and then for this side you make 0 through 1 just 0 and 1 because it, if you think about it you're only going to go up to 16 which is a 1 on the left side so yeah there it is so after you have that done you'll probably have to pause the video because I'm not gonna it's gonna take a while to do what you want to do but by the way if you want to just do it just select the brush you made if you want to do it quickly and just find um, numbers and you can use some that aren't overlays I don't know if there are any that aren't overlays you can make some they're not hard but this will probably look the best it does in my opinion so after you have all those laid out one through zero through nine you want to go to each of them and I'll I guess I'll try to start on zero so this will be your first brush I assume when you make them there'll be zero there'll be an order this one just picks the one that it happens to click on first so with this you want to make a funk brush now you might in some instances you, you'll be able to make a funk uh, wall toggle which just you know like it says it toggles it on and off visible invisible but with this we have to make sure since it's going up and down it doesn't pick the wrong ones it doesn't just toggle you want to make sure it's off not just the opposite of whatever it is sorry if that's confusing point is to be safe you want to use a funk brush for this particular scoreboard so and these will all be the same you'll just change 0 to 1 and then 1 to 2 and then 1 to 2 you can just copy them over and over but I named 0 right because this is the right number and it's 0 go figure so then I just changed it to sort of look like um, it kind of glows it, it won't actually really glow that much but it will kind of look like a digital clock this just you can mess around with this to get your best result but I did a kind of green glow color and, and a world space glow and, and not quite all the way opaque opaque would be 255 this is sort of mostly opaque you can see through it just a little bit and uh, always solid there's no reason for the players to even be on it anyway but if you want to do that that's fine uh, you'll then it'll be important I'm not gonna do this in this one because it'll crash but um, I believe that if you hit flags you'll want to say start invisible I believe that's what it is 
and that's all you do for every single one. I'm gonna make sure every single. I'm gonna. Okay, I'm gonna make sure. Hopefully, it doesn't crash. It doesn't crash. Okay. Sorry. Forget I said that. It'll it'll be off anyway. Let's see. I disabled receiving shadows since there's no reason for it to. It's just a number. Um, the reason I thought you needed flags because wall toggle does have that, but you don't actually need it because I'll show you in a second why. So after you have all those strings and then do zero and ones, this would just be the same thing except zero left, and that's just an easiest way, the easiest way to keep track of which you're turning on and off. So what we have to do next is sort of the hard part. It's not really hard. It's just kind of tedious and once you realize what is going on, you'll you'll just have to if you're an organized person then it'll work out fine. So these are all going to essentially it's going to happen a red team a red teammate is going to spawn and it'll start on 0 0. I'm going to kind of already go like put these all since you only need to call on them you don't actually need to edit them anymore so you're going to want to put them all on top of each other and only only one on the left will be visible at one time and only one on the right will be visible so they won't look like they're overlapping so when this trigger is activated by someone spawning or dying in this case to begin with it'll be spawning it'll go from zero zero and it'll just turn the zero off It'll turn zero and every other number that isn't the correct one off just to make sure. Uh, in this case, it would be one. One would be the only one that would be turned on. So it would do that, and then if if that player died, it would go back down one because the math counter is being called and it's being called to say subtract one from that number. So to get that set up, this is the last part of it, I believe. You have to go into the logic cases. Now this is this might look a little bit overwhelming to begin with. Hopefully, oops, hopefully not. Okay, you have all your, your cases. Now, as you can see, this is it being completed. There are a lot of outputs. And really, it's just a bunch of copy and paste, just changing one number to enable and then one number to disable. So for case one, you'll want to have a case. So it's saying for when, when the math counter is zero, you'll want it to show up as zero over here. So you want to call on all the numbers that are not the right ones and disable all of them on case one. And then you'll want the one, right ones to be on. So you'll just, since it's zero, zero, to start out with, you'll enable zero left and zero right. Uh, an easy way I found to keep track of what to do is find that entity make a copy of the entity just for now it's just for organizational purposes and delete all these oops perhaps I cannot shift click I think it's going through them all there we go all right delete all oh come on there we go my computer is just stupid so that's an empty one you don't even need to name it if it confuses you or anything like that uh, so you want to take the first cases, say you've got them all done because you, you understand zero, 0 is the only one that should be enabled. So you take those and copy them and then go back to your blank template and just paste what you have. And then you can work from here. You'll know the next will need to be case 2. So you just change it to case 2 and then update the numbers that need to be enabled. So if it helps disable all of them, you might not need to disable all of them. You can't actually highlight them all. But if you want to, you're going to have to disable 0 left and 0 right. That's not true, sorry. 0 left will stay on, obviously, until it gets to 10. Until the number displayed to everybody is 10. So it'll be 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. So you won't, you'll, to begin with, you only have to change the number that you want disabled and the one you want active. So with this, it's on case 2. So case 2 is when it equals 1. This can be sort of confusing. The case name is just a name. Don't worry about those numbers. You'll want to look at the value and see, okay, the scoreboard should say 0, 1 right now because that's, that's 1. And that's 
you just line it up to case 2. So you want to change them all to case 2 and enable one on the right and then and zero left should already be enabled and then it when they spawn it'll do zero one and who you want to do keep doing this uh, you want to copy all these and then paste it I'm not going to do it because I already have it but paste on the on case two into here and you'll want to do that for all of the way through case 16 it can get pretty difficult after you're done with both of these you'll just delete this extra one it's just to help you organize for this one it's a lot simpler you only need to do one case because it's only looking for 16 because 16 will be the max number of players that can be there so you'll do the same thing enable one left one six sixteen and disable everything else and there you go when you start up the map You'll, if you want to test it yourself, you'll have to do a console command to spawn bots so it'll know. And you just, the console command is tf underscore bot underscore add and then a number, space, a number. Or you can just do tf underscore bot underscore add and it'll just add one at a time. And you'll see that, you should see this number go up every single time. Now let's just make sure that everything is where it should be. By the way, these are just normal blue spawns, and over on the side are red spawns. I just made this little, I should have turned it into a funk detail, just for performance. Not that it matters in this tiny one, but I just made it over here so you could have a little shield, because the, these bots are just as good as these bots, but if you give these guys a little bit of an advantage, you can see this for testing purposes, uh, flip back and forth through numbers. If multiple ones die at the same time, you'll see it jump. It, it shouldn't matter. Now, I do have to say that if you have a crazy admin that likes to die and then, or not die, if, if he has no clip and he flies through an area that he shouldn't, it will mess with the score if he's supposed to be dead. This won't be a problem in Arena because you can't, as far as I know, spawn, respawn yourself. But if you have a map where you don't want people that have died to come back into an, a certain area, then that'll screw it up momentarily as long as he's in there. And you won't be able to win if the objective is to kill all of that team to make this score go back to zero, which is what I'm trying to do. So this looks pretty good. Um, I want to thank you for watching. I'm going to try to do more unconventional ways to... Uh, to screw around with TF2 maps because it's kind of fun to go off the beaten path a little bit. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I'll see you next time.